there's my little donut. And I'm going to insert down the tube. I, I do confess I'm trying to make this a lot more perfect than it has to be. Because that's just how I do things. Here's where we're at. This is the bottom of my column. And you can see how I've created the baffle so that the gas, once it enters through this ball valve, which is a low restriction ball valve, has to pass along the outer edges of the column in order to continue its way up the column. And then down inside, you can see, uh, I guess that's probably a good view, the donut that redirects the airflow coming up from around the outer edge through the center to uh, remove any of the turbulence from the gas as it enters the collection column. <clears throat> so, valve is open, tube is connected, filler cap is plugged, power is on, flux capacitor is fluxing. Alright. <coughs> <clears throat> I'm going to let the cell run at 15 amps until it comes up a little bit higher temperature. If we have a heavier than air product that's combustible, it should cause the air, which is lighter, <coughs> to push out. Same is true of the hydrogen and the oxygen. In fact, the hydrogen should just disperse almost immediately through the uh, paper towel. Can I explain the HHOI thing? What are we trying to find? The idea which was presented to me, or the claim that was made to me, is that there is this magical gas called HHOI. And uh, stands for HHO ionized, or ionized HHO. Whether or not that's actually what we have here is debatable. Whether or not the cell that I've constructed is even capable of producing this magical gas is uh, unknown. But what was told to me is that all HHO cells produce this HHOI gas to some degree. Okay. And that being the case, it was also, it was also, uh, postulated that this HHOI gas is heavier than air because somebody performed a demonstration where they took this heavier than air gas, put it into an open lid container, um, allowed it to sit for a couple of minutes and then put a match to it and it exploded. It, well, didn't explode, but it popped. So, Sterling Allen over at PESN was having a, uh, a Skype chat with somebody named Bobcat and asked if I would uh, attempt the experiment. So I said, sure, I'll, I'll attempt it. Um, I came up with a methodology of collecting this heavier than air gas. I threw something together really quick with three tin cans and I put a petcock valve on the bottom and a small fitting on the top and I just set it in place on top of my bandsaw table much the same way you see this setup and uh, I fed fed HHO gas through it very slowly to eliminate as much of the turbulence as possible inside the inside the column and the uh, as the theory goes, if the gas is indeed heavier than air, it will stay in the column and everything else will will uh, either disperse immediately or be pushed out at the top 
as it uh, floats <coughs> on top of the heavier gas and would separate out the gases. Well, it didn't work. And I uh, wasn't too surprised, but I also have to admit that, you know, a stack of three tin cans is something of a half-hearted attempt. So, I don't want it being said that I wanted the experiment to fail. I do want to give it a good shot, and that's what I'm doing. So, I took my 5-inch uh, PVC column by 24 inches, put a, a ball valve on the bottom, a couple of baffles inside to eliminate any, any turbulence created by pushing gas in there very fast, and uh, I want to keep producing this HHO gas and allowing it to rise through the column. <coughs> HHO will disperse immediately off the top, and any other lighter gases will, will should uh, settle out in the column and rise up slowly and be pushed out <coughs> the top of it <coughs> the top of the column so that's the experiment uh, this time I am not not using a bubbler I'm just allowing it to go directly in because someone posed the question uh, what what of the um, the bubbler might not that be a collection point and I thought well if if this is and and then this is the other term that was thrown out oh well it's not it's not HHOI because uh, uh, HHOI is uh, is lighter than air oh okay so what is it well now they're calling it linear water because <clears throat> I think uh, I think as the theory goes the reason the reason water molecules are at, uh, the reason the hydrogen atoms on a water molecule are at 104.45 degrees to one another rather than 180 degrees out is because there are two additional pair of free electrons on the oxygen molecule that hold it from going uh, opposite the oxygen atom. <coughs> I guess the theory is we're stripping electrons from the oxygen molecule, or from the oxygen atom. Stripping electrons from the oxygen atom so that the hydrogen can rest at 180 degrees and you have a linear molecule instead of one that's sort of at right angles, almost at right angles. Somehow I don't think you'd have oxygen anymore if you take four electrons away from it, but that's a whole nother story. But anyway, this uh, this magical linear water is supposed to be vaporous at room temperature, hence heavier than air, and settle into the bottom. It's also supposed to be combustible. All of which has yet to be demonstrated to, I think, anyone's satisfaction. Especially mine.